Time. A.D. Damon. BBC Radio Leicester. Next year this afternoon, girls as young as 11 have experienced sexual harassment at school. That's the finding of a review by the education regulator Ofsted. Inspectors spoke to hundreds of young people and were shocked by what they heard. Ofsted's chief inspector is Amanda Spielman. Every school that we went to, young people reported a significant problem. It wasn't in some, it was in all of them. So schools need to reverse the problem and start on the basis that a significant proportion of their pupils are affected and work to build that healthy culture, that strong understanding about what's acceptable and what isn't. Nine out of ten girls reported incidents of sexist name-calling and being sent unwanted pornographic images. More than half of girls said unwanted touching happened a lot or sometimes. Lucy and Keris recently left school, but they can remember countless times when they were put in uncomfortable situations in and around the classroom. Sexual harassment has become normalised so much so that it's not a surprise anymore and it's just brushed off. I've received... More than I can count on my hands, images of privates that I did not want to see. And I think the first port of call is to go to your mum. But other than that, it's really hard to know what to do because you just feel very vulnerable in the situation and you feel like, I don't want to see that, I don't know what to do with it. Inspectors say sexual harassment has become such an everyday part of school life that many victims don't even bother to report it. The report also found many teachers had underestimated the scale of the problem. Jeff Barton from the Association of School and College Leaders says the findings have come to a shock as many. The only people perhaps who are not going to be shocked by this are those girls and young women for whom this has become the norm and who have lost the confidence to think it's even worth reporting so it's an incredible wake-up call to all of us this gives us a spotlight into the world in which they're living and schools can play an important part not the only part but schools colleges have an important part to play and we need to do more in response to this report the education secretary says no young person should feel sexual harassment is part of their daily life and harmful behavior in schools must be tackled i'm now joined by jane kenyon the founder of girls out loud a social enterprise which supports some of the most vulnerable girls in society jane thank you so much for your time good evening Pleasure. this report that we've just been hearing about a shock to many as we've been hearing inspectors have said that they were shocked by this report what were you what did you make of it jane yeah, I'm not shocked, unfortunately, not surprised. Um, angered and sad, but certainly not surprised. This train's been coming down the track for quite some time. Uh, we've been working with teenage girls for well over 12 years, and we've seen this kind of happening. And, you know, we've only got ourselves to blame because we've done some really key things that have changed the landscape. So we mainstreamed and we've glamorised porn. Um, we've given our young people these smartphones and then we've got absolutely no regulation on them. So we've then given them access to the most inappropriate content. Uh, we've given them social media platforms that aren't regulated. And then if you add drugs to that mix and you add the trend towards violence towards women, then, you know, you can see the trend come in. So, you know, it's lots of these things are societal issues. School, what happens in school is only a reflection of what's happening in our society. So we can see what's happening in our society in terms of violence, in terms of, you know, the latest, fastest growing social media network is OnlyFans, which is literally like handmade porn. So, you know, we can see all of this coming down the track and then we wonder when it affects our young girls and our young boys. You know, it's been, it's been coming for a while and we see it all the time. You know, Jane, hearing you speak so openly about that, about the problems that mm-hmm. that children are facing, you know, th- as you were saying there, this is clearly reality for, for, for young girls. I mean, do you think that it's recognised by most adults? Is this where the problem lies? That, Like you said, they're smartphones, just given, you know, an access mm-hmm. to, to the, the Wild Wild Web. Is it recognised by adults? I don't think it is. I don't think there's an adult in the room here. You know, I think that we're all looking for somebody else to take responsibility for this. You know, most people are now looking for teachers to deal with this. But, you know, teachers are not the only adults responsible for the behavior, the development of our young people. You know, we all are. Um, And, you know, we've just thrown them in the fire here and expecting them to find their own way through it. So I think whenever I talk to parents and adults about some of these issues, they're shocked. They're really shocked. Oh, my God, she's looking at this and he's looking at that. Well, yes. That's where they're getting their cues from. Our sex ed is appalling. You know, we are not preparing these young people for what they're going to get in their inbox 
you know, for what they're going to see on their social media platforms. We are not preparing them at all. And then we wonder when they fall over. And the reason most girls don't report sexual behavior, sexual harassment, is generally because nothing happens when they do because it's out of control. Schools don't know what to do with it. And if they do, they're worried about the repercussions of that. And they don't really see it as an issue. They don't think it's an issue. They think that that's the way it works. They see it's quite normal. They also see aggression as quite normal as well. Um, so they tend not to report that. And it's only when you point it out to them that it is not normal and nobody has the right to harm you um, and we need to do something about this. They're quite shocked. Do you know, that's something that's, that, that's really stuck out to me and, and, and that I find, you know, hardest to accept is the fact is, as you say there, you know, that most girls say that they don't think there's any point in reporting mm-hmm. it and just going mm-hmm. about it. And hearing you there, mm-hmm. I mean, the, you know, hearing you put it like that, Jen, this, this is a n- massive knock-on effect, as you said mm-hmm. then, that it's not normal, this aggression. How, how, mm-hmm. do, you, how do you go about changing that? Mm-hmm. Well, it's a societal issue, isn't it? So, you know, if women don't report sexual assault because, you know, the convictions are so low and we've had all these campaigns around violence towards women, we've had Me Too, we've had Everyday Sexism, you know, we talk about it all the time, but we never take any action. So nothing ever changes. So what are we saying to them? Live with it because we are. You know, so it's it's the messages that they're getting from us. You know, we've got a growth in far-right misogyny. We've got boys behaving in a very sexist manner towards girls because of the way they're being groomed on their social media channels and their gaming technology. But we're not dealing with that neither. It's like we seem to prefer to be in denial about all of this stuff. Or we think, well, it's not happening to my kid. That's what we think. It was not happening to my kid. And I promise you it is. I promise you it is. So, you know, we all need to take responsibility. We need to get in the room instead of believing that it will go away or if we don't look or we don't ask. Um, or we read these things that have come out today and we go, oh, that must be dreadful for those schools. But, it, you know, my, my girls went to school like that. Rubbish, doesn't matter what school she's at, it's, it's in the school. And we need to come to terms with that and then we need to take some action. Stop talking about it and do something. But what would you like to see happen? I mean, what's the biggest change that you'd like to see in the classroom, Jay? Well, I'd like to see better sex ed. I'd like to see sex education come into the 21st century. I'd like to see us talking to young people about porn. I'd like to see us talking to young girls about consent. Um, I'd like to see that happen. And again, we have been talking about it for a long time. It's not in place. I'd like to see more non-teaching staff in schools with responsibility for this. Because it's okay to keep bashing the teachers, but they are the result. They're exhausted trying to catch up with lots of stuff. Just lost Jane there. More. Oh, oh, he's still there. Sorry, Jane. I, I, I must have moved. No, 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 the reception <laughs> just, you know, the reception just dipped out there. Okay. Jane, thank you so much for your time. If people want to find out more about Girls Out Loud, how, how do they go about accessing that information? Yeah, it's just girlsoutloud.org.uk. Find us online. Jane, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Uh, Jane Kenyon there, the founder of Girls Out Loud, a social enterprise which supports some of the most vulnerable girls in society. How powerful was that, hearing Jane speak, that passion in a voice about what needs to be done? Jane giving her reaction to that report that's been gathered by education regulator Ofsted today that show that girls as young as 11 have experienced sexual harassment at school. 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 Sexual harassment. 